Science fiction and fantasy have been part of mainstream Russian literature since the 19th century. Russian fantasy developed from the centuries-old traditions of Slavic mythology and folklore. Russian science fiction emerged in the mid-19th century and rose to its golden age during the Soviet era, both in cinema and literature, with writers like the Strugatsky brothers, Kir Bulichov, and Mikhail Bulgakov, among others. Soviet filmmakers, such as Andrei Tarkovsky, also produced many science fiction and fantasy films. With the fall of the Iron Curtain, modern Russia experienced a renaissance of fantasy. Outside modern Russian borders, there are a significant number of Russophone writers and filmmakers from Ukraine, Belarus and Kazakhstan, who have made a notable contribution to the genres. Topic. Terminology In the Russian language, fantasy, science fiction, horror and all other related genres are considered a part of a larger umbrella term, fantastica fantastica, roughly equivalent to speculative fiction, and are less divided than in the West. The Russian term for science fiction is nochna fantastica, nochnaya fantastica, which can be literally translated as scientific fantasy or scientific speculative fiction. Since there was very little adult-oriented fantasy fiction in Soviet times, Russians did not use a specific term for this genre until perestroika. Although Russian language has a literal translation for fantasy, fantasia fantasia, the word refers to a dream or imagination, not literary genre. Today, Russian publishers and literary criticians use direct English transcription, fantasy fantasy. Gothic and supernatural fiction are often referred to as mystica, mystica, Russian for mysticism. Topic: Imperial period. Topic: 18th and early 19th centuries. While science fiction did not emerge in Russia as a coherent genre until the early 20th century, many its aspects, such as utopia or imaginary voyage, are found in earlier Russian works. Fedor Dmitriev Mamonov's anti-clerical A Philosopher Nobleman. The allegory, Dvorinin Allegoria 1769, is considered prototypical to science fiction. It is a Voltairean Kante philosophy influenced by Micromegas. Utopia was a major genre of early Russian speculative fiction. The first utopia in Russian was a short story by Alexander Sumorokov, A Dream of Happy Society, 1759. Two early utopias in form of imaginary voyage are Vasily Levshin's Newest Voyage, 1784, also the first Russian flight. To the Moon and Mikhail Sherbatov's Journey to the Land of Ophir. Pseudo-historical heroic romances in classical settings modeled on Fenelon's Telemach by Fyodor Emin, Mikhail Karaskov, Pavel Lvov and Pyotr Zakharian were also utopian. Ancient Night of the Universe 1807, an epic poem by Semyon Bobrov, is the first work of Russian cosmism. Some of Fede Bulgarin's tales are set in the future, others exploited themes of hollow earth and space flight, as did Osip Senkovsky's Fantastic Voyages of Baron Brambius. Authors of Gothic stories included Alexander Bestuzhev with his German color locale, Sergei Lubetsky, Vladimir Olin, Alexei K. Tolstoy, Yelizaveta Kolagriviva and Mikhail Lermontov. Stas. By the mid-19th century imaginary voyages to space had become popular chapbooks, such as Voyage to the Sun and Planet Mercury and All the Visible and Invisible Worlds 1832 by Dmitry Sigov, Correspondence of a Moonman with an Earthman 1842 by Pyotr Mashkov, Voyage to the Moon in a Wonderful Machine 1844 by Semyon Jochkov and Voyage in the Sunday 1846 by Demokrit Turpinovich. 
Popular literature used fantastic motifs like demons, Raphael Zotov's Chin Kyo Tong, invisibility, Ivan Stevens' magic spectacles, and shrinking men, Vasily Alferayev's picture. Hoffman's fantastic tales influenced Russian writers including Nikolai Gogol, Antony Pogorelsky, Nikolai Melganov, Vladimir Karlgoff, Nikolai Polovoy, Alexei Tomofiev, Konstantin Aksakov and Vasily Yushikov. Supernatural folk tales were stylized by Orest Somov, Vladimir Olin, Mikhail Zagoskin and Nikolai Bilovich. Vladimir Odevsky, a romantic writer influenced by Hoffman, wrote on his vision of the future and scientific progress as well as many Gothic tales. Alexander Veltman, along with his folk romances Kashe the Immortal, 1833, and Hoffmanesque satiric tales New or Metamorphoses, 1845, in 1836 published The Forebears of Calameros, Alexander, son of Philip of Macedon, the first Russian novel to feature time travel. In the book, the main character rides to ancient Greece on a hippogriff to meet Aristotle and Alexander the Great. In year 3448 1833, a Heliodoric love romance set in the future, a traveler visits an imaginary country Bosphorania and sees social and technological advances of the 35th century. <laughs> Late 19th, early 20th century Second half of the 19th century saw the rise of realism. However, fantasies with a scientific rationale by Nikolai Aksharimov and Nikolai Wagner stand out during this period, as well as Ivan Turgenev's Mysterious Tales and Vera Jelikowski's occult fiction. Mikhail Mikhailov's story, Beyond History. Published in 1869, a pre-Darwinian fantasy on the descent of man, is an early example of prehistoric fiction. Fictional accounts of prehistoric men were written by anthropologists and popular science writers. Prehistoric Man, 1890, by Wilhelm Bittner, the first artist, 1907, by Dmitry Pakomov, Tale of a Mammoth and an Ice Man, 1909, by Pyotr Dravert, Dragon's Victims, 1910, by Vladimir Begoraz. Mikhail Saltikov Shedrin's satires use a fantastic and grotesque element the history of a town and prose fables. The Plot of Animal Mutiny published 1917 by historian Nikolai Kostomarov is similar to that of Orwell's Animal Farm. Some of Fyodor Dostoevsky's short works also use fantasy. The Dream of a Ridiculous Man about the corruption of the utopian society on another planet, a doppelganger novella The Double, a Petersburg poem, Mesmeric the Landlady, and a comic horror story Bobak. Dostoevsky's magazine Vremya was first to publish Russian translations of Edgar Allan Poe's stories in 1861. Alexander Kondratayev's prose included mythological novel Satyrus and collection of mythological stories White Goat 1908, both based on Greek myths. Journeys and Adventures of Nicodemus the Elder 1917, by Alexei Skaldin is a Gnostic fantasy. Topic. Utopias Nikolai Chernyshevsky's influential What is to be Done, 1863, included a utopian dream of the far future, which became a prototype for many socialist utopias. A noted example is the duology by Marxist philosopher Alexander Bogdanov, Red Star and Engineer Many. Some plays of another Marxist, Anatoly Lunacharsky, propose his philosophical ideas in fantastic disguise. Other socialist utopias include Diary of André by pseudonymous A. V. A. Sky, On Another Planet 1901 by Porfiry Infantiev, and Spring Feast 1910 by Nikolai Oligar. Alexander Kuprin wrote a short story of the same kind, Toast 1907. Among others, Vladimir Soloviov wrote Tale of the Antichrist 1900, an ecumenical utopia. Earthly Paradise 1903 by Konstantin Marischkowski is an anthropological utopia. 
Great War Between Men and Women 1913 by Sergei Solomon and Women Uprising and Defeated 1914 by Polish writer Ferdinand Antony Ossendowski written and published in Russian is about a feminist revolution. Other feminist utopias include Short Farce's Women on Mars 1906 by Victor Bilibin and Women Problem 1913 by Nadezhda Tefi. In Half a Century 1902 by Sergei Sharapov as a patriarchal Slavophile utopia, and Land of Bliss 1891 by Crimean Tatar Ismail Gasprinsky as a Muslim utopia. Voluminous A Created Legend 1914 by another symbolist Fyodor Soligub as a utopia full of science fictional wonders close to magic. Topic. Genre fiction Entertainment fiction adopted scientific themes, such as resurrection of an ancient Roman extraordinary story of a resurrected Pompeian by Vasily Avenarius, global disaster struggle of the worlds, 1900, by Anne Haladny, under the comet, 1910, by Simon Belsky, mind-reading devices a recurring theme in works by Andre Zarin, Antarctic city-states under the glass dome, 1914, by Sergei Solomon, an elixir of longevity, Brothers of the Saint Cross, 1898, by Nikolai Shalonsky, and Atlantis, 1913, by Larissa Reisner. Spaceflight remained a central science fiction topic since the 1890s in In the Ocean of Stars 1892 by Anani Lyakide, In the Moon 1893 and Dreams of Earth and Skies 1895 by Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, Voyage to Mars 1901 by Leonid Bogoyevlensky. In Space, 1908, by Nikolai Morozov, Sailing Ether, 1913, by Boris Krasnogorsky and its sequel, Islands of Ethereal Ocean, 1914, co authored by astronomer Daniil Savyatsky. In the 1910s, Russian audience was interested in horror. Fire Blossom, a supernatural thriller by Alexander Amfidetrov and Vera Krizanovsky's occult romances, that combined sci-fi and reactionary elitist utopia, were popular. Bram Stoker's Dracula was imitated by pseudonymous B. Olshevri equals More Lies in Russian in Vampires, even before the original was translated to Russian. Early Alexander Grin's stories are mostly psychological horror influenced by Ambrose Bierce, though later he drifted to fantasy. Future progress was described in fiction by scientists. Wonders of Electricity, 1884, by electric engineer Vladimir Chikolev, Automatic Underground Railway, 1902, by Alexander Rodnik, and Billionaire's Testament. 1904, by biologist Porfiry Bakhmetyev. Future war stories were produced by the military cruiser Russian Hope, 1887, and Fatal War of 18, 1889, by retired Navy officer Alexander Bellamore, Big Fist or Chinese-European War, 1900, by K. Golikvastov, Queen of the World, 1908, and Kings of the Air, 1909, by Navy officer Vladimir Semyonov. War of Nations 1921-1923-1912 by Ix, War of the Ring, with the Union, 1913 by PRTSKY, and End of War 1915 by Lev Zhdanov. Threat to the World 1914 by Ivan Ryapasov, who styled himself Ural Jules Verne, is similar to Jules Verne's The Begum's Fortune. Jules Verne was so popular that Anton Chekhov wrote a parody on him, and Konstantin Sluchevsky produced a sequel, Captain Nemo in Russia, 1898. <laughs> <laughs> Soviet period <laughs> Soviet science fiction The Soviet era was the golden age of Russian science fiction. Soviet writers were innovative, numerous and prolific, despite limitations set up by state censorship. 
both Russian and foreign writers of science fiction enjoyed mainstream popularity in the Soviet Union, and many books were adapted for film and animation. Early Soviet era The birth of Soviet science fiction was spurred by scientific revolution, industrialization, mass education and other dramatic social changes that followed the Russian Revolution. Early Soviet authors from the 1920s, such as Alexander Belayev, Grigory Adamov, Vladimir Obrashov and Alexei N. Tolstoy, stacked to hard science fiction. They openly embraced influence from the genre's Western classics, such as Jules Verne, Arthur Conan Doyle and especially H. G. Wells, who was a socialist and often visited Soviet Russia. Science fiction books from the 1920s included science predictions, adventure and space travel, often with a hue of working class agenda and satire against capitalism. Alexei N. Tolstoy's Aelita 1923, one of the most influential books of the era, featured two Russians raising a revolution on Mars. Tolstoy's engineer Garin's Death Ray 1926 follows a mad scientist who plans to take over the world, and he's eventually welcomed by capitalists. Similarly, the main antagonist of Belayev's The Air Seller is a megalomaniac capitalist who plots to steal all the world's atmosphere. Belayev's Battle in Ether is about a future world war, fought between communist Europe and capitalist America. Soviet authors were also interested in the distant past. Belayev described his view of historical Atlantis in The Last Man from Atlantis 1926, and Obrashov is best known for Plutonia written in 1915, before Revolution, but only published in 1924, set inside Hollow Earth where dinosaurs and other extinct species survived, as well as for his other Lost World novel, Sanikov Land 1924. Two notable exclusions from Soviet Wellsian tradition were Yevgeny Zamyatin, author of dystopian novel We 1924, and Mikhail Bulgakov, who contributed to science fiction with Heart of a Dog 1925, The Fatal Eggs 1925, and Ivan Vasilyevich The two used science fiction for social satire rather than scientific prediction, and challenged the traditional communist worldview. Some of their books were refused or even banned and only became officially published in the 1980s. Nevertheless, Zamyatin and especially Bulgakov became relatively well-known through circulation of fan-made copies. The following Stalin era, from the mid-1930s to the early 1950s, saw a period of stagnation in Soviet science fiction, because of heavy censorship that forced the writers to adopt socialist realism clichés. Science fiction of this period is called close aim. Instead of the distant future, it was set in tomorrow and limited itself to anticipation of industrial achievements, inventions and travels within the solar system. The top close aim writers were Alexander Kazantsev, Georgi Martinov, Vladimir Savchenko and Georgi Gurevich. In films the close aim era lasted longer, and many films based on close aim books and scripts were made in the 1950s and 1960s. Some of these films, namely Planet of the Storms 1962 and The Sky Beckons 1959, were pirated, re-edited and released in the West under different titles. Topic. Late Soviet era Algis Boudry's described post-war Russian science fiction as akin to the style of Hugo Gernsback. Ah, comrade, here among the marvels of the year 2000, we are free to discuss dialectical materialism in total tranquility. In the second half of the 20th century, Soviet science fiction authors, inspired by the thaw period of the 1950 and 1960s and the country's space pioneering, developed a more varied and complex approach. The liberties of the genre offered Soviet writers a loophole for free expression. 
Social science fiction, concerned with philosophy, ethics, utopian and dystopian ideas, became the prevalent subgenre, Boudry said in 1968, when reviewing a collection translated into English, that Russian authors had discovered John Campbell with stories that read like they were from the back pages of circa 1950 astoundings. Most Soviet writers still portrayed the future Earth optimistically, as a communist utopia, some did it frankly, some to please publishers and avoid censorship. Postapocalyptic and dystopian plots were usually placed outside Earth, on underdeveloped planets, in the distant past, or on parallel worlds. Nevertheless, the settings occasionally bore illusion of the real world, and could serve as a satire of contemporary society. The breakthrough is considered to have been started with Ivan Yefremov's Andromeda 1957, a utopia set in the very distant future. Yefremov rose to fame with his utopian views on the future, as well as on ancient Greece in his historical novels. He was soon followed by a duo of brothers Arkady and Boris Strugatsky, who have taken a more critical approach. Their books included darker themes and social satire. The Strugatskys are best known for their Noon Universe novels, such as Hard to Be a God, 1964, and Prisoners of Power, 1969. A recurring theme in Strugatsky's fiction were progressors, agents of utopian future Earth who secretly spread scientific and social progress to underdeveloped planets. Progressors often failed, bitterly recognizing that society is not ready for communism. The brothers are also credited for the Soviet's first science fantasy, the Monday Begins on Saturday trilogy 1964, and their post-apocalyptic novel Roadside Picnic 1971 is often believed to have been a prediction of the Chernobyl disaster. Another notable late Soviet writer was Kir Bulichov, whose books featured time travel and parallel worlds, and themes like antimilitarism and environment protection. The space opera subgenre was less developed, because both state censors and highbrow intelligentsia writers viewed it unfavorably. Nevertheless, there were moderately successful attempts to adapt space westerns to Soviet soil. The first was Alexander Kolpakov with Griada, 1960, followed by Sergei Snegov with The Humans as God's Trilogy, 1966-1977, among others. A specific branch of both science fiction and children's books appeared in the mid-Soviet era, the children's science fiction. It was meant to educate children while entertaining them. The star of the genre was Bulichov, who, along with his adult books, created Elisa Selizneva, a children's space adventure series about a teenage girl from the future. Others include Nikolai Nosov with his books about dwarf Neznaika, Yevgeny Veltistov, who wrote about robot boy electronic, Vitaly Malentiev, Yan Larry, Vladislav Kropivin, and Vitaly Gubarev. <laughs> Films and other media Soviet cinema developed a tradition of science fiction films, with directors like Pavel Klushantsev, Andrei Tarkovsky, Konstantin Lopushansky, Vladimir Tarasov, Richard Viktorov and Gennady Tyshenko. Many science fiction books, especially children's, were made into films, animation and TV. The most adapted Russian SF author was Bulichov. Of the numerous films based on Elisa Selizneva stories, Animation Mystery of the Third Planet 1981 is probably the most popular. Other Bulichov based films include Per Aspera Ad Astra, 1981, Guest from the Future, 1985, Two Tickets to India, 1985, The Pass, 1988, and The Witch's Cave. 1990. Andrei Tarkovsky's Stalker 1979 was written by the Strugatskys, and is loosely based on their roadside picnic. There were also less successful films based on Dead Mountaineers Hotel 1979 and Hard to Be a God 1989. Alita 1924 was the first Soviet SF film, and Engineer Garin was made into film twice, in 1965 and in 1973. 
Amphibian Man 1962, The Andromeda Nebula 1967, Ivan Vasilyevich 1973, Heart of a Dog 1988, Sanikov's Land 1974 and Electronic 1980 were filmed as well. There were also numerous adaptations of foreign science fiction books, most frequently, by Jules Verne, Stanislaw Lem and Ray Bradbury. Of the movies based on original scripts, the comedy Kin Dza Dza and children's space opera duology Moscow Cassiopeia and Teens in the Universe should be noted. Despite the genre's popularity, the Soviet Union had very few media dedicated solely to science fiction, and most of them were fanzines, released by SF fan clubs. SF short stories were usually present in either popular science magazines, such as Technica Moladesi, Vokrug Sveta and Aralski Sledopit, or in literary anthologies, such as Mir Prikliucheni, that also included adventure, history and mystery. Topic. Soviet fantasy Topic. Literature Fantasy fiction in the Soviet Union was represented primarily by children tales and stage plays. Some of the early Soviet children's prose was loose adaptations of foreign fairy tales unknown in contemporary Russia. Alexei N. Tolstoy wrote Buratino, a light-hearted and shortened adaptation of Carlo Collati's Pinocchio. Alexander Volkov introduced fantasy fiction to Soviet children with his loose translation of Frank L. Baum's The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, published as The Wizard of the Emerald City, and then wrote a series of five sequels, unrelated to Baum. Another notable author was Lazar Lagan with Old Kotobich, a children's tale about an Arab genie Kotobich bound to serve a Soviet schoolboy. Any sort of literature that dealt seriously with the supernatural, either horror, adult-oriented fantasy or magic realism, was unwelcomed by Soviet censors. Until the 1980s very few books in these genres were written, and even fewer were published, although earlier books, such as by Gogol, were not banned. Of the rare exceptions, Bulgakov in Master and Margarita not published in author's lifetime, The Strugatskys in Monday begins on Saturday and Vladimir Orlov in Altus Danilov introduced magic and mystical creatures into contemporary Soviet reality in a satirical and fabulous manner. Another exception was early Soviet writer Alexander Grin, who wrote romantic tales, both realistic and fantastic. Magic and other fantasy themes occasionally appeared in theatrical plays by Yevgeny Schwartz, Grigory Gorin and Mikhail Bulgakov. Their plays were family-oriented fables, where supernatural elements served as an allegory. The supernatural horror genre, by contrast, was almost completely eliminated by censors' demands for every media to be modest and family-friendly. <laughs> Films Fantasy, mythology and folklore were often present in Soviet film and animation, especially children's. Most films were adaptations of traditional fairy tales and myths, both Russian and foreign. But there were also many adaptations of stories by Alexander Pushkin, Nikolai Gogol, Rudyard Kipling, Astrid Lindgren, Alan Alexander Milne, among many others. There were numerous fantasy feature films by Alexander Rue, Kashchi the Deathless, Maria the Magic Weaver, Kingdom of Crooked Mirrors, etc., and Alexander Tushko, The New Gulliver, Sadko, Ilya Muromets, Sampo, etc. Tushko also wrote VIY the most famous and arguably the only true Soviet supernatural horror film. Fantasy animated features were produced by directors like Lev Adamanov, Snow Queen, Scarlet Flower, etc., Ivan Ivanov Vano, Humpbacked Horse, Snow Maiden, etc., and Alexandra Snushko Blotskaya, The Enchanted Boy, Golden Cockerel, numerous adaptations of Greek mythology. The late Soviet era saw a number of adult oriented fabulous films, close to magic realism. 
They were written by Schwartz, An Ordinary Miracle, Kane 18, Gorin, Formula of Love, the very same Munchausen, and Strugatsky's Magicians. Most of them were directed by Mark Zakharov. Several Soviet fantasy films were co-produced with foreign studios. Most notably, Mio in the Land of Faraway, 1987, co-produced with USA and Sweden, was shot by a Soviet crew in the English language, and featured Christopher Lee and Christian Bale. Other examples include The Story of Voyages, 1983, co-produced with Czechoslovakia and Romania, and Sampo, 1959, co-produced with Finland. Topic. Most notable Soviet writers Post-Soviet period Topic Literature From the 1990s to this day, fantasy and science fiction are among the best-selling literature in Russia. The fall of state censorship in the late 1980s allowed publishing of numerous translations of Western books and films that were previously unreleased in Russia. A new wave of writers rediscovered high fantasy and was influenced with John R. R. Tolkien, Robert E. Howard and, more recently, George R. R. Martin. As a result, the popularity of traditional hard science fiction relatively faded, and fantasy, with distinctive Western features, became the predominant genre. While the majority of fantasy writers, such as Nick Paramov, Vera Kamsha, Alexei Pekov and Tony Vilgotsky, follow the Western tradition with its archetypal Norse or Anglo-Saxon settings, some others, most notably Maria Semenova and Yuri Nikitin, prefer Russian mythology as inspiration. Comic fantasy is also popular, with authors such as Max Fry, Andrei Belyanin and Olga Gromyko. Urban and Gothic fantasy, virtually absent in the Soviet Union, became mainstream in modern Russia after the success of Sergei Lukyanenko's Night Watch and Vadim Panov's Secret City. Magic realism is represented by Maria Galina and Lyudmila Petrushevskaya. Sergei Malitsky is also a notable author with his own distinctive style. In science fiction, with communist censorship gone, many various portrayals of the future appeared, including dystopias. Post-apocalyptic fiction, time travel and alternate history are among the most popular genres, represented by authors like Vyacheslav Rybakov, Yuri Nikitin and Yulia Latinina among many others. Overuse of fish out of water plots for time travel and parallel worlds led Russian SF and F journalists to coin the ironic slur Popadanets Rus Popadanic lit. Getter for such characters. There are still many writers of traditional space-related science fiction including space operas, such as Alexander Zorik, Tomorrow War series, Lukyanenko, Lord from Planet Earth, and Andrei Lividny, among others. The late 2000s and early 2010s saw a rise of Russian steampunk, with such books as Alexei Pekov's Mockingbird 2009, Vadim Panov's Hermeticon 2011, and Cetopolis 2012 by Gray F. Green a collective pen name. A large part of modern Russian SF and F is written in Ukraine, especially in its sci-fi capital, Kharkiv, home to H. L. Oldy, Alexander Zorik, Yuri Nikitin and Andrei Valentinov. Many others hail from Kiev, including Marina and Sergei Jichenka and Vladimir Aronev. Belarusian authors, such as Olga Gromyko, Kirill Benediktiv, Yuri Brader and Nikolai Chadovich, also contributed to the genres. Some authors, namely Kamsha, Jichenkas and Fry, were born in Ukraine and moved to Russia at some point. Most Ukrainian and Belarusian SF and F authors write in Russian, which gives them access to a broad Russophone audience of the post-Soviet countries, and usually publish their books via Russian publishers such as Exmo, Ozbuka and Ast. In the post-Soviet fantasy and science fiction, the extensive serializing of successful formulas has become usual. Most notable are the two post-apocalyptic book series based on the Stalker computer game and Metro 2033 novel, both of which featured a well-developed universe. 
The STALKER book series features are heavy branding and almost negligible influence of the actual writer's name on individual novels also, a TV show is in development. And though Metro 2033 raised its creator Dmitry Glukovsky to national fame, it quickly developed into a franchise, with over 15 books published by various authors and spanned a tie in video game. Topic. Movies Production of science fiction films and fantasy films in modern Russia dropped in comparison to the Soviet cinema, due to high costs of visual effects. Throughout the 1990s, almost no movies in these genres were made. In the 2000s and 2010s, however, Russia once again produced a number of films. Most of them were based on books, notably by Sergei Lukyanenko, Night Watch, Day Watch, Asira's Nuna, Bolichov, Alice's Birthday, The Strugatskys, The Inhabited Island, Ugly Swans, Hard to Be a God, Semenova, Wolfhound of the Greyhound Clan, and Gogol, VIY. A number of children's fairy tale films and animations were based on Russian mythology and history, most of them by Melnitsa Animation Studio most notably, the Three Bogatyrs franchise and Prince Vladimir. In 2014, the Soviet classic Kin Dza Dza was remade into a family-friendly animation coup. Kin Dza Dza Movies based on original scripts were rare until mid-2010, but since then Situatwion has changed. Original plots include mockumentary First on the Moon, time travel drama We Are from the Future, cyberpunk action Hardcore Henry, science fiction drama Attraction, superhero films Black Lightning and Zashitniki. Timur Bekmambatov and Fyodor Bondarchuk were among the most influential producers and directors in the recent period. Topic Other media Russian video game developers also contributed to the genres. Examples include fantasy-based MMORPG Alods Online, turn-based strategy Etherlords and science fiction RTS Perimeter, among many others. SF&F magazines, websites and other media became widespread in modern Russia. The largest magazine is Mir Fantastiki, while Esli and Polden, 21 VEK have closed down after the Great Recession. Ukrainian magazines, such as RBG Azimuth or Realnost Fantastiki, were mostly Russophone. Among websites, Fantlab.ru and Murph.ru are considered the most influential, according to Roskin Award. Topic: Notable writers. Topic: Anthologies. Soviet Science Fiction, Collier Books, 1962, 189 pp. More Soviet Science Fiction, Collier Books, 1962, 190 pp. Russian Science Fiction, ed. Robert Magadoff, New York University Press, 1964. Russian Science Fiction, 1968, ed. Robert Magadoff, New York University Press, 1968. Russian Science Fiction, 1969, ed. Robert Magadoff, New York University Press, 1969. New Soviet Science Fiction, Macmillan, 1979, ISBN 0-02-578220-7, SHE 297pp. Pre-Revolutionary Russian Science Fiction, an Anthology, Seven Utopias and a Dream, ed. Leland Fetzer, Ardis, 1982, ISBN 0-88233-595-2, 253 pp. Worlds Apart, an Anthology of Russian Science Fiction and Fantasy, ed. Alexander Levitsky, Overlook, 2007, ISBN 1 58567 819 8, 656 pp. Literature 
Darko Suvin. Russian Science Fiction, 1956-1974, A Bibliography. Elizabethtown, N.Y., Dragon Press, 1976. J.P. Glad, Extrapolations from Dystopia, A Critical Study of Soviet Science Fiction Princeton, Kingston Press, 1982. 223p. Scott R. Samuel, Soviet Science Fiction, New Critical Approaches. Ph. D. Dissertation, Stanford University, 1982. 134p. Nadezhda L. Petrosin, Fantasy and Utopia in the Contemporary Soviet Novel, 1976-1981. Ph. D. Dissertation, Indiana University, 1986. 260p. Carla A. Cruz. Soviet Science Fiction, 1909-1926, Symbols, Archetypes and Myths. Master's Thesis, Princeton University, 1988. 71 p. Matthew D. B. Rose, Russian and Soviet Science Fiction, The Neglected Genre. Master's Thesis, The University of Alberta, Canada, 1988. Richard Stites, Revolutionary Dreams, Utopian Vision and Experimental Life in the Russian Revolution. Oxford UP, 1989. Richard P. Terra and Robert M. Filmus. Russian and Soviet Science Fiction in English Translation, A Bibliography, in, Science Fiction Studies No. 54. Topic. Volume 18, Part 2 July 1991 Anandita Banerjee. The Genesis and Evolution of Science Fiction in Fan de Siècle Russia, 1880-1921. Ph.D. Dissertation, University of California, Los Angeles, 2000. 324p. Vitaly E. Kaplan. A Look Behind the Wall, A Topography of Contemporary Russian Science Fiction, Russian Studies in Literature 38, 3, 62-84. Summer 2002. Also in, Russian Social Science Review 44, 2, 82-104. March, April 2003. Matthias Schwartz. How, Nachnaya Fantastica. Was made, the debates about the genre of science fiction from NEP to High Stalinism, in, Slavic Review 72, 2 equals Summer 2013, pp. 224-246. Science Fiction Studies No. 94 Topic. Volume 31, Part 3 November 2004. Special Issue, Soviet Science Fiction, The Thaw and After. Park Jun Sung. Literary Reflections of the Future War, A Study of Interwar Soviet Literature of Military Anticipation. Ph. D. Dissertation, University of Michigan, 2004. 198 p. Alexei Golubev. Effective Machines or the Inner Self? Drawing the Boundaries of the Female Body in the Socialist Romantic Imagination Canadian Slavonic Papers 58, No. 2, 2016.